one is uh, uh, you drop you track uh, you know uh, troop deployments and troop strength that uh, where uh, have the chinese moved more soldiers across some some area uh, which would give you an indication of, of sort of something being being planned you also track uh, uh, conversations and provocation so conversations that there is a, a regular system of uh, senior officers meeting each other mm-hmm. uh, and so if that is happening quite frequently uh, then you know you know people are talking to each other if there is a big gap for example uh, we recently held the 18th meeting there was almost a 4 5 month gap between the 17th and 18th meeting so how much conversation is going on uh, at the, at the ground level uh, politically diplomatically because that's a good indicator that uh, at least people are talking to each other uh, and finally provocation in the sense that look we already have a tense situation on the border uh, is the chinese military making some uh, provocative kind of uh, actions i i mentioned to you uh, about this yangtze incident yes i mean there is talk that almost uh, 400 soldiers tried to sort of intrude into uh, across the line of control into indian area and then they were stopped and there were physical clashes mm-hmm. uh, so if you really want uh, peace and tranquility as as they use the words along the line of active control uh, should you be actually doing this kind of provocation or is it is it sort of avoidable so these are some of the things uh, i think uh, i mean that you look at uh, to see how things are going uh, what is the possible thinking on the other side so when we move on to you know let's say the indian perspective from a, a little bit more at a global level right there are a lot of things going on i think um you know we are more than a year in um now you know in the ukraine conflict war whatever you want to call it i think the the western world or a lot of commentators they now see you know in the or there's a lot of kind of hope in in whatever naive or not naive way in in india's role um you know be it in an economic sense or like the security sense obviously to hatch um versus china like how realistic do you think are these assumptions and the reason i'm saying that is the strategic autonomy that you just like you know questioned before in in the, in the question it does seem to be like quite real like coming from europe um to a certain extent um europe wants the same uh, even though like it doesn't talk with one voice uh, at all on on this matter but like you know how do you see, how, how do you see india's global role here Okay, so uh, I mean, I know India did come in for some criticism, uh, particularly mm-hmm. from the West, on you know not openly sort of opposing Russia. Right. But frankly, uh, and and I say this, uh, it shouldn't have come as a surprise. I mean, Russia has been uh, a sort of a, a traditional supporter of India mm-hmm. many many years. Uh, <clears throat> if you recall. Uh, after 2020 what happened in ladakh between india and china the first meeting of the chinese and indian defense and foreign ministers was actually held at moscow so moscow was also looked at as a, as a place where if there is a problem between india and china uh, you know both countries uh, could uh, look at moscow somewhat as a, as a sort of an indirect uh, kind of a mediator uh, india was also very highly dependent on uh, on russia for defense supplies so uh, india also say that you said uh, you know uh, we have a strategic autonomy so i think uh, an outright condemnation of russia should not have been sort of expected from india india did say that uh, you know we want things to be resolved peacefully and uh, talk should take place uh the prime minister is on record just telling uh, president putin that this is not a need of war <clears throat> mm-hmm. so that's the sort of approach that is uh, that is that is taken by that is taken by india uh and i think you will you will see that uh you will see that approach at least uh, officially being sounded uh, also in the future would india be uh looking at uh 
relations with uh, with Moscow, dependence on arms supply closely, I think India would be looking at that and trying seeing that you know how to reduce particularly dependence on on uh, of Russian on Russian equipment. And well, I think why why do you think that's be... the case? Is is that just because of like for political reasons, or is it more because of like sanctions and like a replacement of you know maintenance? I think like uh, these are the things that I'm reading at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so there are I mean there are there are very practical considerations to it, and one is that uh, already because of sanctions etc., uh, and because Russia itself is engaged in the war. Uh, the availability of spares, availability of upgrades, <clears throat> right. the availability of equipment that was contracted from, from Russia. Uh, and also somewhat, I think, critically would be looking at the performance of Russian equipment and saying it isn't good to have over-dependence on, on one country. And therefore, there is a need to diversify. So that diversification was already taking place. Uh, for example, I mean, we hardly bought any uh, U.S. military equipment, but in the last uh, I think uh, eight or ten years. So, fair amount of equipment has also come from uh, from the United States. Uh, so, I think there is a practical consideration of why we are going to be looking at. Right? And you also see in Indian businesses, and particularly those businesses uh, which have uh, sort of like a uh, you know international uh, business also. Are also very chary of the of the whole sanctions regime. That if we do business with Russia, uh, we know what happens to our international companies, etc. So, I, as I said, I think there are practical considerations, and and frankly, uh, how Russia China relations uh, grow in the future, uh, where does you know the dependency between these two countries on each other go? Does Russia become very weakened and become over dependent on China? Those are also things that I think India will have to be practically looking at.